Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Wednesday, uh, February 20th. Great to be with you guys this morning. Robert, Jaya, Marco says, if you have some time, can you spend a few words on how you manage the trade at the level? Which chart do you use? I found the 10 or 15 minute charts misleading. Is it okay to use a 30 minute chart? What is your experience? Marco, we'll touch on that today if we have time for sure. Pete, Pooja, Ty, great to see you guys in the room. And welcome. Uh, apologies about yesterday's move of the webinar, guys. There's a huge mishap um, with TradingView, and I essentially lost a big chunk of my charts, and so did Jamie. So um, that's been resolved, but unfortunately, a lot of the analysis <laughs> got deleted. So we have um, we're in the process of putting things back together. At least on my end, uh, it was all the daily charts on my end that were affected. So. We're in the process of putting that together, but it's always good, uh, having said that, to sometimes just kind of take a blank naked chart, start from scratch again, see if you come out with the same type of results as far as trend and analysis and the like. Uh, so it's a good drill, but we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, lots to cover today. I do want to hit DXY, we'll go over Euro, uh, Dollar CAD, big moves, gold, Kiwi, Aussie. Aussie, we're in a long position right now too on the swing side of things. Um, and then I'll open it up to any questions, guys, uh, from your end. Do keep in mind, we have Fed minutes on tap later today. Um, as far as expectations are concerned, look, the major focus at this point, markets have all but priced out any type of interest rate hike this year. Okay? So that's kind of consensus. Uh, no one expects that the Fed is going to hike rates any additional uh, further measures this year. The question is whether they plan on tapering um, the offload of the balance sheet. So if you recall, the Fed is currently offloading $50 billion of their balance sheet monthly. If uh, the minutes show a discussion or increasing willingness or an increasing consensus to taper that offload, it would suggest that the Fed does see um, you know, dark horizons on the board, right? And that would certainly be suggestive that not only we're not going to see rates move, but we're likely also to see the Fed take a really easy tone uh, throughout the course of the year. So I think that's what we're looking for in the minutes. It's a nuanced thing, guys. It's not going to be a clear-cut release, so just keep that in mind uh, later today. Tomorrow, um, or later today, we do get the Aussie employment numbers as well. Tomorrow, we get ECB numbers, so keep in mind as well the uh, ECB minutes, rather, from that interest rate decision. See if Mario Draghi has anything on that end. Okay, that's the economic docket. Let's jump into price action, shall we? Here's first things first. I do want to take a look at Sunday's update, uh, or I guess this was Monday's update because uh, the holiday, uh, as it pertains to the DXY. This thing, you know, has broken down. We're sitting at support at 96.45, a decent pivot in price, former swing lows. It's the uh, 618 line uh, of that trend or that pitchfork that has continued to hold this advance, resistance on the upside, raise ceiling, turn right ahead of it pivot right below the lower parallel or the median line and the focus was on a break here if we get this break we're likely to see a bigger drop now if you look to the daily chart on the right which again these are all new daily charts uh, you can see that the 100 day moving average is also right there a longer term slope this is the daily right off of last year and this year's low gives you the 50 line it's been kind of messy but there's the pivot there's the pivot that's sitting right there as well, 9640s, 96.45 is where it is on the intraday chart. Okay, so here we are. The only thing that we've added to this chart to add some color is just the descending slope off the highs. If we take the high that we made for the opening range for the week, take a parallel off that from last, uh, what was that, the 13th. Um, really nice touch, really nice touch. And here we are with further convergence again at 96.45. So it's all about this level. You know, I think at this point we can work with a bullish uh, or a bearish, excuse me, invalidation at 96.81. That's the weekly open. In time, later uh, this afternoon into the close of US, open of Asia, that converges right on slope resistance. And again, you know, basically if this is going to hold, guys, advances should be capped by this. I don't want to see any movement above or beyond 96.81. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my thought process here. Um, with the DXY breakdown. So feel free to take a picture of this chart. Nothing really updated from that chart um, 
like I said from earlier in the week, just that near-term downslope. Uh, Robert, I got you. Hey, Robert, great to see you. Pete says oil and SPX. Pete, I got you on the SPX. Man, all my SPX charts, Pete, got deleted. So man, I just did a quick reference on it before the webinar because I had a feeling you were going to ask about it. Uh, we'll take a look at the levels I'm looking at here. Can I get the daily DXY says Ty? Sure can. Oh, and Peter Green says, hi, sorry, mate. If you have time, can you look at uh, the SPX? All the Pete's love SPX, huh? Peter and Pete, I got you guys for sure. Was the trading, was the deletion on trading view? So Robert, yeah, I have, um, I have relationships with the, me and Jamie, with the guy who owns trading view. Actually, I'll be seeing him later today. Uh, and they gave us, you know, free premium accounts like, I don't know, like four years ago. And I guess on their end, the premium account that they gave us was like a four year thing or something. And it kind of timed out. So it just deleted all, it deleted all the double charts that we had. So for all the charts where I had two layouts, a daily and an intraday, all the dailies got deleted on the weekly. Half of those got deleted. They, they obviously fixed it for us, but uh, the damage is done. So you guys have nothing to worry about on your end. Um, you want the DXY daily. I got you, Ty. And here's the, I had to, like I said, I had to redo this one, but um, based on kind of a fresh outlook, this is what I'm looking at with the DXY daily. I did like this pivot into the start of the year, right? Because that's exactly where the opening range low for January was before we broke. And it's been a decent pivot in price. Uh, this is kind of hairy here, right? You had an outside day yesterday. It wasn't a reversal day because we had a down day on Friday, but um, certainly, we're still just sitting on that 100-day moving average. So you could get some back and forth here for a little bit. Ultimately, you know, we don't want to see that move and close below 96.40 to get this thing going. Larger key support on the daily chart is pretty, pretty readily identifiable. The monthly open for February now converges dead on with the 200-day moving average. That's around 95.55. So. Um, I like the slope, you know, the parallels, everything just looks really good. We're just going to continue to stick with this. All things held constant. We're basically still looking for a failure uh, on any advance towards 96.80. Downside break, near-term targets on the intraday chart, unchanged. The 50% retracement takes you near the lower parallels. That's just below 96.27, 96.25 right here. Um, and then the 618 is right at 96. So as far as the downside targets are concerned, let me just... Shift these around. I'm sorry, guys. Little butterfingers this morning. There we go. Something like that. Questions, comments, concerns on DXY. Keep your eye on that. Um, and again, we have, like I said, the FOMC minutes coming up later today, this afternoon, there's no expectation. You know, the markets, and I was reading the news on the ferry ride this morning, and it's just like, <laughs> headlines love this central bank drama. To them, this is like, you know, morning soap opera TV. There, no one's expecting anything on rates. There's no expectations that the conversation will have anything to do with rates. The whole focus is, do they pause the unwind, or do they let it go? If they're gonna let it go, 50 billion a month, we're gonna stay steady at that. It suggests, okay, they're basically taking their foot off the gas, not necessarily tapping the brakes. If they start to taper the unwind, that would suggest, again, a much more concerned um, you know, outlook about the uh, upcoming or the forecast for the US economy. All right, number two, Euro from last night. Here's what we look like. Again, just starting to put together those charts again. Um, and here's what the whole thing looked like. So for Euro, guys, this could have been, and again, I had a big weekend, so I'm sorry, uh, lack of communication there on Friday, but what a big, 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 massive close. Remember the level we've been talking about 113 for months, and the whole thing has been, guys, this weekly chart is pretty clear. Every time we get near 113, you know, this thing basically fails to clo close below, Every weekly attempt has closed at or above 113. And until we get that close, we really can't do jack. It happened again. You know where we closed last week? 1290. Talk to me about like flirting with disaster. So we got a pretty strong rebound. 
closed well off the weekly lows. I'll show you the intraday chart in a moment, but we closed at 1290. To me, I'm not going to count that as a break. Okay, so in my mind, in my mind, 113 is still the cre is the, still the key uh, support zone in euro. Here's what it looks like on a closed basis. You know what I mean? Let me move that out of the way. Come on, give me a break. What is that? Right. So look, a couple things to note. A, you're marking some pretty radical divergence here. Remember, um, Ty says, did you get hitched? <laughs> I got engaged, not hitched. Not yet, Ty, but we're on, we're on the way now. Um, so listen, uh, the, the, the 113 level, what's happening here? Remember what I always tell you guys about uh, momentum, divergence? The closer both reference points are to the 50 threshold, really subtle things that no one tends to talk about, those tend to be the strongest divergence signals. So the fact that both these reference points are above 30 and close to 50 and price action registered a new low, the oscillator did not register a new low. That to me is actually a pretty decent divergence signal. Not justification for a trade, not like the only reason to jump long and just you know hope for the best, but supportive of at least some sort of near-term hold sideways to higher uh, price action in euro. Again, weekly chart, right? So we're looking at longer term things here. This is not an intraday idea or anything like that, but just to go to show you the longer term picture, man, 113, it's still there. It's still pretty important resistance uh, or support rather, okay? So keep your eye on this chart as we get into the week. The only other thing I want to highlight on this, guys, is um, the 200 week moving average, right? We're just trading right below it. That's going to be another one that we'll want to see pivot, okay, on a closed basis. I want to see price pivot and close above this little threshold here. You can see, again, every attempt that we've made, the closes have been pretty radical. Either you've rebounded off it or closed right at it and then rebounded off. There hasn't been much sort of middle ground uh, on that front. So if we push through and close the week above 1335s, let's call it, 1340s, that would suggest, again, you have made a near-term low in price. Okay? Weekly chart, bigger picture stuff. So no change to any of those levels. Daily chart looked like this as we started the week. Again, 113. We're going to start continue to favor near-term fades against 113 as long as we're above 113. Here's what the daily chart looks like now. Okay? So that level is still the level that we're watching. Near-term resistance, 50% retracement, just a basic half, okay? Split that decline from the highs that we made in January. That gives you 1374. 114 turns out to be the 618. And just ahead of that is the 100-day moving average. That's what, that's what this confluence region is. So really nice levels on the upside. That wouldn't even take in year the month, the yearly open. The yearly open still at 114.45. So as far as targets are concerned, you're pretty good. You're testing range highs right now intraday chart looked like this now i'm you know remember last week we added this pitchfork we didn't know i was telling you guys i don't want to put too much emphasis on it because i don't really know if we have uh something to work with i think about a week later now we can suggest yeah this pitchfork has been pretty decent for us you found support you found support 50 line was a little messy but once we broke down again found support at the median line again resistance at the 50 line and here's the last turn which completed an exact 100% extension off the high. So two equal legs was the exact low, 112.34. Uh, so the rebound is great that we got on Friday. Again, we closed just below 113. That's why I didn't want to just abandon the long side of the trade. Um, and here's the test that we were looking at last night. Now, you know, 1337 is the 618 extension. I would love for this to hold a support. We're kind of still dallying here, but the main level for me, guys, is still 1375 near term. Here's the intraday chart. So 1375 is 100% extension off the low. So if this is two equal legs, it's going to give you 1375. And then the 50 of the near-term drop. Remember on the daily chart, we just looked at it. That converges right on parallel resistance. So if you take a slope off the low, basic support, take a parallel off the weekly opening range highs, looks like a perfect touch, looks like a perfect touch, looks like a perfect touch. Top parallel converges again on that region. So look, if you're holding longs on Euro, if we don't get into this region today, I'm still 
you know, okay with this as long as we stay above, you named it, 113. It's still the same level we're looking at. Um, northbound of 113, I like it. Southbound of 113, I'm neutral, okay? Keep in mind, I didn't want to clutter up the chart, but the weekly open is right here. So it's like 112.90. If it drops again, that's where we closed last week. Um, you know, just don't get washed out if it kind of dips into here and then rebounds again. But you get the picture. We basically want to see support along that slope, along the low day close from December, uh, along that 113 key region of support. Uh, 1375, like I said, is the first major level that I love. Right beyond that, 114, 618 retracement of the decline and that 100-day moving average right here. And that's right here. So again, one of those trades where the levels are clean. If you're holding longs, you want to go break even at this point because if you do dip into 113 or, or, or thereabouts, again, I'd be looking for exhaustion. So there's no point in giving up 30 pips if, you, if you're in a decent position. Um, would I take a short here? Mm, that's a tough one. I can't say I would necessarily be looking for a short, no. Even on a near-term trade. I would rather uh, look for the dip, you know. That's just my opinion, to get long. If you're really aggressive, man, if you have a tight stop against the highs, maybe you can squeeze a drop towards 1320. But for me, largely, I'm hoping that this holds. I want to see it move higher. Mike, which day did you enter a long trade and at what time? So, Robert, I'm not in this one at this point, but the entry would have been last, um, the move yesterday, either here with this drop or on Friday. Again, I was out on Friday. That was actually when uh, my event happened. <laughs> but this was a beautiful drop. Guys, as soon as this thing, just to let you know, and again, I don't like to use, you know, I would have, should have, could have, but just to drop, just to put things in perspective. If I was here yesterday on Friday and this thing dropped below 113, tagged that 1233, the second they recovered back above 113, I'd have a long against that stop. I know it's a big stop, but that's exactly what this thing has done on every attempted break at 113. Once it recovers, you get a decent bounce. 113, once it recovers, you get a decent bounce. 113, once it recovers, you get a decent bounce. You get the picture? So like... There was no reason to kind of get too too timid on that one, but in any case, uh, this would have been a great trade against the weekly opening range lows if we, once we recovered back above as well. From here, if we drop and wash out towards these regions, I'd be looking for a stop against that low. Um, that's pretty much the only trade for me as far as trying to jump into a new fresh long from here. I need to get I need to get a deeper cut. I need to get a deeper cut. These are really nice levels. I love both of these. 113.75 and the 114 zone. And of course, this is going to start to open up, guys, as we get deeper and the uh, and the moving average drops. He says, ah, okay. Cheers, Robert, on that. Um, so, Marco, as far as execution, just to address your question real quick, that we kind of talked about that real quick just now, but um, for me, I toggle. I don't want to give you kind of a staple to work with because I, I treat every trade different based on what price action is doing, but I do, t I do tend to toggle. What issues are you running into with the real tight timeframes? So the one thing I want to always note, Marco, is that when you're executing, yeah, I'm all down for jumping into the time frame. So make sure your levels are mapped out here on the hourly, on the two hour chart, uh, you know, maybe 30 minute. I used to be a big advocate for the 30 minute, but I really want to map out the levels on the broader time frames for execution. You know, definitely you can jump in. Here's the 15-minute chart. I'm not really a big fan of 15 per se, but, you know, um, I tend to look at the 10 and the 5 a lot during price action to, to, to gauge entries. Uh, on these charts, I'm looking for a couple of different things. I'm looking for momentum to give me some triggers, to give me some divergence. And I'm also looking for, um, you know, candlestick formations. Maybe you get an outside reversal on a near-term front. Maybe uh, you get a pin bar as this thing is heading towards resistance, but you have to be trading off of one of the levels. You know what I mean? So a break of a pivot of a convergence that we were looking at or a stretch into a confluence zone of resistance and short off that region, a drop into here and along off this region. Um, you don't want to just start chasing. And that's the problem with getting too deep in the, in the time frames, right? Guys will start to look at a five minute chart now all of a sudden their world revolves around this 10 pip range. This breaks, now all of a sudden they're betting the farm looking for the entire extension to 114, right? So the only way to keep yourself um, 
kind of objective to the larger picture is to make sure that we're always toggling their time frame. All the analysis is always on the 120, uh, the 60. The la levels are all mapped out here. I'm just looking for the intraday to kind of execute the entries. Hope that helps. We'll look at a couple more examples, Marco, but uh, let me know if that adds some color. All right, so that's uh, Euro. Number three, dollar CAD. Man, here's uh, dollar CAD has been, he says clear, right on, Marco. Uh, here's this thing. So look, really nice, um, really nice play. I mean, the reversal was perfect. So on this one, on the previous update, if you guys recall, on the Monday, we were looking at dollar CAD. We said, look, this thing's sitting right here in this zone. We're bearish, sub 3280. Uh, I should have wrote 3281 because that's actually what was on the chart, or 3282. But um, literally, guys, this thing hovered, broke, tagged perfectly, and then just collapsed. Like you could not have gotten a more textbook trade. What's 3282, you may ask? Very nice. It's actually the two-hour reversal close. So it's that big old two-hour reversal close. If you turn this into a four-hour chart, it's also the four-hour reversal close as well. And it converged right on basic slope support, turned resistance. Here's dollar CAD now. Right? Perfect rally, rip right into that level. We maxed out the high registered right at 32.81, and then we collapsed. First level was being hit yesterday. Okay, that's what we were talking about um, here. We added this pitchfork after the drop. The median line yesterday converged right on that 50. So again, when we find these confluence regions, we want to see a reaction. If it's going to rebound, should be a pretty decent rebound. If it's going to break, should be an accelerated drop. You should see markets start to accelerate. That's exactly what you're getting. Accelerated drop through 32. Again, not only a big figure, but a 50% retracement, former swing lows, former swing lows, median line. Once that broke, you're still looking for that drop near 131.66, 131.72. This, my friends, is my favorite, for those of you who have been with me for a couple of years know that, Fibonacci confluence regions. A 100% extension from the decline off the high and a key 618 retracement from the ascent off the lows. These tend to be beautiful areas of um, inflection. And again, don't take my word for it. The, the fact that when you look back in price, you see inflection here further adds conviction to it. Here's the break and acceleration. That is inflection. Here's the tap of resistance. Pull back. That's inflection. When we broke, no dilly dying, it was acceleration. That's inflection. Here's the pullback. Same region. Again, inflection. So on this drop right now, $4 CAD shorts, 31.66, 31.77, do something, okay? Take something off the table, bring your stops to break even or better. If you're flat, um, you know, I'm not a fan of playing the rebound. If it's going to rebound, this might be a spot to look. Uh, but if you're holding shorts, the best thing to do is take a little off table, go break even. If this accelerates through, guys, again, it's going to be like this. I don't expect this to kind of like dilly dally come above come above if it's going to break here it should shoot right down and if it's going to hold if it's going to inflect you should see something like this something like this so it's all about this level into the open of us trade on dollar cad that's 3166 into 3177 near term resistance now back at 32 okay uh, I'm comfortable bringing bearish invalidation down at this point to the weekly open. That gives you 32.50. Beyond here, you're looking at the 200-day moving average. I have that somewhere around 31.40. And again, monthly open supports 31.22. That's this region here. Okay, here's your daily chart. So you have monthly open support, 200-day moving average, longer-term slope, right? All converging in this region. First things first, 3166, 3170, that's the level we're watching for support into the US Open. Questions on dollar cat. It's man, it's a beautiful play. It's a beautiful setup. One thing I do want to note is, you know, don't fall in love with pitchforks, guys, as much as really trying to stress and identify the slope. Because a lot of these trades. And I was playing around with this this morning. Like, for I don't want to confuse anyone, but you know, if you take just the slope off the high and mirror that sort of 
gradient, um, a lot of times you get the same type of setups, right? And this would again suggest that mm, we're coming into an area of interest here. So stress the slope, not the formation, all things held constant. We're looking for a reaction at 3166, 3170. What price is the lower slope and moving average tie? So the the moving average, again, I have somewhere around 30. I guesstimate this every day. So, um, you know, I can bring it up for you just to give you the exact line, actually. So let's not beat around the bush here. So 31.43 is the 200-day moving average. Okay, uh, what do I have it at? 31.41. So that's the 200-day moving average. The slope for the actual gradient comes in just lower, and that tie comes in just above the monthly open. So that's why I kind of leave this range uh, of area I'm looking for support. Let's call 31.30 into 31.23 is the monthly open, and slope 31.43 is going to be that 200-day moving average. Okay, but guys, first things first, this is really important for me right now. I really want to see if price accelerates through this on the U.S. Open, that's, you know, hold them if you got them at that point. Um, but I am looking for some sort of reaction, acceleration, pivot, something into this region, into the U.S. Open. Make sense? All right, so that's dollar CAD. Um, From last night's update, uh, last but not least is gold, but I see Marco or Robert, you have a piece here on Kiwi. So let me jump into Kiwi first and I'll come back to gold here. Um, the Kiwi update from last night or from the previous night looked like this. And we were coming into, you know, a level of which, look, for me, it was all about 68.70. Okay. It kind of probed into that 7.86 retracement, sure. But when we recovered back below this, the daily chart shows major inflection here. You have a key 618 extension at these levels. You have clear pr price inflection at these levels. So if this was going to maintain a downside move, we needed to see resistance hold at this parallel, essentially. And the first area of support is 68.27. The, the, the setup looked decent. You know what I mean? Um, especially because the 50 line here was a perfect pivot. You had support, bounce, break, and then we tested it as resistance. Well, we broke. We tested the upper parallel. And here's uh, what Kiwi looks like now into the open of US or ahead of the US open. So you are holding along off 68.50, 21 points so far. Okay, looking for profit on 69. What are your thoughts? 69. So here are my thoughts. Um, who is this for? Robert, uh, here's what I'm looking for, man. You know, the thing with this is, let, let me take a step back. This was where I would have wanted to be short. So, you know, based on the update, you're looking, I was telling you guys to look for failure ahead of that line uh, if we're going to be heading lower. So if you took a short off this level, or you were playing that play, weekly open support was your first area of support. My issue with this now is that now you're posting an outside reversal candle off of weekly open support, and that is constructive. So for you, you're holding along off of... 68.50, excellent. Uh, you want to bank on a close or a push above this. Let me get the 60, uh, the hourly close here. Hold on one sec. Cool, it's going to be the same level. All right, so this is how I kind of play it when I'm in the trade intraday, right? Your hourly close, your high hourly close bar gets you 68.88. The opening range high is just above that. Um, if we get through this, that's what would validate a breakout. But until we do, Rob, the only thing I can say to you, man, is that you're still trading in the weekly opening range. I'm always mindful to take it back to super, super objective basics. I trade monthly, uh, weekly opening range strategy. So if we, um, as long as we hold the initial uh, Monday, Tuesday stretch, I'll typically only play within that range. So if you're holding long positions, you know, slope comes in at 68.80, just to be quite frank, then that level, this is the region I would need to see break out to continue favoring the long side. Otherwise, I'm fading out that position into the range highs for the week. And if we get a move lower and I still like the long, maybe I take it again. Um, but there's nothing here to suggest that, you know, you're marking resumption yet. Does that make sense, Robert? Until we get the good luck, LOL. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, man. I will close uh, if it goes weird. Perfect. 
Yeah, if it goes weird near the top. Yeah, that's all I would say. I mean, listen, I'm all with you. If you want to leave a little on, and I would, uh, if you have a decent, you know, if you've segmented that position, you have a couple of lots on, whether it's micro, mini, or standard, I don't care. Uh, leave a little bit on. If you want to fade out that position, go stop at break even uh, in the event of the breakout. But for me, you know, this is just a simple weekly opening range. The long position here was beautiful. Even the long you took right here is beautiful, but don't let that turn against you. So we're still trading within this near-term formation. We're still trading within the weekly opening range. The only thing you got going for you here, or something you do got going for you, is that outside hourly reversal. That's near-term constructive. And momentum rebounding off 50, or rebounding at or about 50, that's near-term constructive. Um, formation, slope, mm, break's not there quite yet. Now, uh, let me say this. If you get through resistance, Robert, um, you got, I mean, again, this is just my opinion, but I think you got room towards like 6930s. Um, not sure 69 per se would be the big, the big problem. Uh, let me just show you a couple levels here on the daily chart. So weekly open resistance comes in, or excuse me, monthly open resistance comes in at 6915. And then this range right here is the critical range. This is the 618 extension from the ascent off of last year's low and the 50% from the decline off last year's high. Right, so that zone, which caught the exact high close back in December, is kind of where the big, big resistance level is. So just above 69. Let's just say that. He says, "Yep, thanks. All right, you got it, Robert. Interesting setup. I do, you know, Kiwi. I wish I had a little bit more on this. You guys remember last week? Um, <laughs> last week when we were talking about Kiwi." I was in the webinar with you guys and I was sitting in a long position right ahead of the RBNZ. That, that long worked by luck, guys. I mean, like I said, I always say it's always good to be lucky more than skillful. That one worked all by luck. I got out way too early, but it worked just on the account of we were sitting at support, big level, 618 retracement, 100 day moving average. You named it and it was there. Monthly opening range lows. That one was like a no brainer, a tight stop against the low. It's just, you just want to be in those. Um, from here, you know, I was concerned for a larger pullback, and that risk would be nullified essentially with a break above that 69.90 level. So that's my take on Kiwi. Questions, comments, concerns on New Zealand dollar? It's the only pair that has been saving my last five weeks. Robert, stick with what works. Stick with what works, and what and what's what. What? Excuse me. And with what's not working, put it on the sidelines, guys. No one knows more than me. I've been there. I've been that guy who takes a trade, and then the direction is right. Someone tweeted at me yesterday. I heard. I saw that tweet. I'm not sure which one of you guys was it about knowing. It might have been you, Robert. Uh, knowing the direction is actually, uh, you know, is only half the trade, right? And that's 100% right right? Your, the direction is right. So the market pulls back and you missed it. So now you want to jump in again and you continually press a trade that's working against you. Look, if clarity is not there, if the market moves guys and you don't, and you miss your entry, or if you're getting FOMO more importantly than anything, just step away from the pair. Just step away from it. And with what's working, those are the trades. Sometimes you need to know press harder, right? Okay, so that's Kiwi. Um, that's number four. Let me take a circle back real quick. I guess we should just do Aussie and then I'll circle back to gold. He, here's uh, here's Aussie. Man, it looks good. Jamie nailed that entry last night. Nailed it. 7140 was what we put on the swing trades. Um, you know, the, my only reservation with this trade is I really want to see some some action above 7175. Okay, that's just my it's my crutch. It's been a level of which I've been watching for a while. It's the 50% retracement. Okay, let me show you the daily chart. It's the 50% retracement, which is not all that. Okay, it's not a big deal, but you have a couple of things there. You have slope. So here's the median line, the actual median line for the formation we've been following from last year, right there. And then the 50% retracement right there. Okay, the high that we executed in the high week, basically, basically the high op opening range high for the week is there as well. So that's kind of my only problem. As I would have liked to see this pullback give us, you know, 
a dip a deeper move. Uh, I didn't like that yesterday. It gave us an outside reversal higher. Um, you know that scares me as a, as a concern for a near term exhaustion. But hey, it was a decent entry. Just don't let it bite you, okay? If it comes back, that's the only thing I want to say. So watch seventy one seventy five for the pop. That's the move, and the objective weekly opening range. Um, that would mark resumption in my eyes. You'd be looking for slope resistance. You'd be looking for the 618 retracement just higher at 71, at 72. Okay, 7203. Did it get triggered? Um, I mean, I trade manually. I don't put in uh, orders, so... It might not have triggered if you have a if you put in an order, guys. The low was seventy one forty one. I didn't catch a seventy one forty clip. I jumped in this month much later, but really near term. Seventy one sixty four. What we're testing now is the just a basic hundred day moving average. So this is like your first sort of ceiling. Let's call it. But 7175 is the region of resistance that we need to get through. Low at 7142. Is that what yours is calculating? Yeah, if I hover here, look to the left, it says um, 7141. Yes, didn't quite get down there. But guys, I mean, look, as far as the swing, swing trades are concerned, guys, if you're working explicitly on the swing side of things, yeah, put those limits in as Jamie puts them, uh, as, we, as we put in the reports and let them play out. But um, don't be... If you have the luxury of your in, being in front of your trade guys or being in front of the charts and you see something like this, don't be too stringent. You know, if market does like this and it closes a candle like 10 pips, 15 pips off the low, um, you know, and you're and you miss entry by one or two pips, for me that's an entry. I don't have to like necessarily time the exact tip low, uh, and I won't necessarily forego that trade just because I didn't get the exact entry. So you have flexibility, guys, beside beyond the levels that we're giving you. One drill I wanted to show you guys here on, on Aussie dollar is slope. So I was looking at this earlier today. If we take this same slope, he says, that's why I asked you about entry management, Marco. Yeah, so Marco, good question. I mean, it's a perfect example. And I always encourage you guys, ask whatever you want here. You're, you, you guys are in the right place. Um, so yeah, if I, if, you know, Jamie's looking at 7140, you saw that I was looking at 7146 as a pivot. Um, you know, we dipped below that, closed above. That's an entry all day long. We, we don't have to like necessarily doubt everything. Um, but what I wanted to show you on this is you see that with this slope, I didn't use this low. It was an emotional low in the 14th there. Um, if we do use that low, what I want to show you is, let's just delete this real quick. Okay, a parallel of that slope extending off this high. Look at this. Resistance. Oops. Resistance, resistance, resistance. So I don't know if I want to be too stringent with that other slope because we are seeing some inflection more so on this gradient, which is a little bit lower. Um, but I just wanted to show you that. You know, there's different. There's a couple of different ways that we can derive the slope that we're working at here. This is the original slope, um, and that held basically support right there in the rebound. So look, 71.75. That's the level of resistance you need to get through. It's very similar to Kiwi. The only thing I would say is that Aussie, in my humble opinion, is a little bit more constructive than Kiwi because this, to me, yesterday looked like a break of the weekly opening range. Here's your Monday open, or you, you test a high. You test a low into the Tuesday session, Wednesday session, here you are, you stretch into the high, and you break it, right? And we've been sitting above the objective weekly opening range. So it's sliding down a little bit lower here, but objectively, I do think this is a little bit more constructive than if you look at something like Kiwi, which didn't break its weekly opening range. Here's the weekly open, you set a low, and you failed ahead of the highs, where Aussie has broken the highs and it's kind of just dribbling a little bit lower. Look for a break of this immediate range for guidance ideal scenario this pulls back maybe another opportunity for entry guys um and holds that slope for a topside breach again my main region here my main focus on this trade is 72 okay that's 618 clear pivot in price clear pivot objective irrespective of the of the fib ratio resistance 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 
resistance, resistance, break, acceleration, a little dip below, acceleration, it's on slope. This is the 618 line, excuse me, the 75% line of that slope. And the only reason I have that there, guys, is because on the uh, on the underbelly or the lower bounds of this slope, that's exactly what caught support. So if we have some, um, you know, some symmetry to the to the formation, that gives us a stretch, or at least room to 72 if this is going to move. Bullish invalidation, what would term me straight bearish, is 71.14. Nothing strange on that end. Keep in mind, you do have Aussie employment data on tap. Uh, and then later this week, you do also get the, um, what is there, the RBA statement, uh, which could shake things up a little bit. But I think look for dollar price action to really be driving here. Any questions on Aussie? I don't want to get too stringent on this trade because if it does need to wash out once more for another low, um, this might be a sick entry if we get it. Uh, first things first, so let's see what happens at this region. I'm already, yeah, my position size on this is like minuscule, so whatever happens, happens here. All right, next, next, um, next chapter, as it were. Here's number five, number six, gold. Man, gold is on a tear. You guys see this? Coming into some big, pretty big regions of resistance, 1348, 1350. Here's what the levels look like all down the board. First things first, here's your weekly chart on gold. 1350 is going to be the 2018 high week close. Came early in the year in January, the week of the 22nd. There's the high for the year was registered. The close of that week was right there at 1350. And again, every attempt all of last year until we broke down at a push through that level was met with a big, big push and close, weekly close back below. So that's the level we need to break. Just above that, you have basic slope resistance. It is a three-point touch, one uh, from the 2016, twice last year. So, you know, that's a level I'll be watching if we break higher. But first things first is 1350 is going to be a big level. couple things to note here on the weekly chart. Momentum's in overbought condition. Don't fight it. This is not when you want to start fighting and saying, oh, it's overbought. It's got to pull back. No, 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 no. Look back in price. Here's the last time we broke into overbought condition. Um, well, not the last time, but here's an example, right? This is during financial crisis. Here's another example, 2011. That's when the high was registered. This is now its highest level in momentum since the registered high, guys, on weekly momentum. Let me just get you an auto there. Put things in perspective, okay? The last time momentum was at this high, look where my cursor is, was the 2011 1900 record high that you put in gold. That's not to say that this is bearish. That's to say that as long as you're in the upslope above overbought, man, that's when the market has the most rip. So it's not, uh, you know, advisable of any means to get bearish on gold. Um, and I'm looking for a reaction up in near 1348, 1350. Here's gold on the daily chart. Again, this is a fresh look, redone from scratch for you guys yesterday. Uh, here's 13.48, the high day close for 2018. Remember, the high week close is, is, is 13.50. The high day close is 13.48. We're just pips off that here this morning. A basic slope support off the advance off the low from November. Take a parallel. You know, if you extend it off the high that you made back here in uh, January, you're kind of there right now. If you extend it off the early um, February high, we're testing it as we speak. Long story short, you know, 1348, 1350 is a risk. If we're going to get an exhaustion, if, if gold is going to take a little bit of a break, this would be the first region to look, okay? Um, not to mention, again, we don't know yet because this is a daily chart and the daily close is going to determine this, but all things held constant, if we were to close right at these levels, this would be a third divergence mark on the daily chart, right? Price action with a higher high, price action with a higher high, the oscillator with a lower high, equal high, right? Still divergence. 
Obviously, as I always tell you, these momentum divergence signals above 70 or below 30 will tend to be your weakest ones. So I don't want to put that as sort of an emphasis, but certainly it does highlight the threat for some near-term exhaustion if price fails at 1348, 1350. Watch out for resistance here near term. Okay, top side break. You're all you're all gung ho. 1366 is going to be last uh, the 2016 high. Uh, 1380 is going to be a basic 38.2. This is of the larger decline. Okay, from the uh, record highs. So the levels are pretty clear. Supports at 1322 monthly open, and that's 786 that we highlighted as resistance into the open of the month. That's your near term support. Bullish inval steady at 1302. Intraday chart looks like this. So again, even a near-term slope that we were looking at um, earlier in the week. Here's a gold look like yesterday, right? Let me get you back into that two-hour chart. 120 minute. So we're basically just like sitting here at resistance. And I just wanted to highlight this because I know a lot of you are very, very active in this trade. Um, and I just want to say, you know, if, if it starts to fail here, don't be too surprised, okay? Even if it spikes into 1348, 1350 first and starts to fail, don't be too surprised. We're heading into slope resistance. We've been stretched pretty far out. I mean, guys, objective look at gold. I mean, this is radical stuff. The range uh, just for this month. For some reason. I don't know how to do that on this laptop. But anyway, uh, a measured move of this, you're basically looking at like, you know, three plus percent. Um, so watch watch for some exhaustion here. Still love the trade to the upside. If we're going to get some sort of kickback, some sort of reset, uh, this would be my first area to look. Let me work with something like that. Gives you that room for that 1348 tag. And even in momentum, even on this two hour chart, just as a guidance, you know, it's only a two point touch, but a break back below that slope would also necessitate a move back below 70. Might be the onset of, of a point of reference just for a little bit of a kickback here in gold. Questions, comments, concern on gold. All right, guys, that's um, that's all that's on my list. Let me jump into your questions here. Um, we took a look at Kiwi for Robert. Pete's, both Pete's want to take a look at SPX, right? Okay, so here's my take on the SPX. Again, I, I, I show this with um, just a cautionary note that I've only had a couple of uh, minutes with this chart. I wouldn't say minutes, maybe you know, 45 minutes or so last night, but I haven't spent too much time with it. So this is all I've come up with. All my, my whole crew chart got deleted. So a fresh look at it um, looks like this. Okay. So from a Fibonacci standpoint, 2810 is a level of interest just because you see those highs that we made last year um, and slope. So I just took a basic slope off the low that we made in that January stretch there and the low that we made just into the start of this month, um, the parallel of that extending off of that early January stretch gave you resistance, it gave you resistance, and now converges on the 786 retracement. So on an upside stretch, uh, Peter and Pete, this is sort of an area I'd be looking for exhaustion, and whoa, what a coincidence. If you look back in price, it's been a pretty damn decent pivot in price as well, right? Resistance, acceleration on the breach, acceleration on the breakdown, resistance, you know, whatever the hell that is, resistance 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 in and of itself objective inflection point in price you have a fib level there you have some slope there momentum is testing 70 on the upside look at the last time we've tested 70 on the upside here it's not a trade that likes to get above 70 until you get some sort of breakout or acceleration so testing upslope resistance as momentum's at 70 eh, for me I think the exhaustion um, trade is kind of the risk here I don't have anything on the near-term front. Here's the two-hour chart. Um, I don't have anything really on the near-term front, Pete um, and Peter, as far as sort of structure to this thing, but these are the levels. Okay. 
at the end of the day, you're in an uptrend. Okay, you're kind of just looking. Um, you're, you're kind of looking for uptrend resistance, which is kind of the hardest plays if you're trying to do something new. Uh, if you're holding long equities, is nothing to shake you out. Uh, you know, just know that you're heading into uptrend resistance. And if 28 fails, if you start to head in 28 and you see more divergence, it, it's probably in it for a bit of a pullback before resumption. Pete and Peter, does that help? Does that make sense? Hey, Mike, did you get my email on the India and equity question? No, Robert, when did you send that? I didn't see that one. Or maybe um, my intern hasn't sent it to me just yet. Uh, great, thank you, says Peter. Pete says same thing, yes. All right, cool. Yeah, I wish I had more for you guys. The only thing I would say on this is, you know, it's it's not, it's getting toppy, but the, the signal for exhaustion, the signal for price, uh, it hadn't necessarily manifested yet. That's all I got to say. So it could just kind of like squirm slowly, stir higher towards 28. I'd be still looking for failure um, in that zone, 28.07, 28.10. But anything to prompt anything on the short side, there's just nothing there yet. Nothing there yet. You had a nice pin bar yesterday. So if, today's, today's, if today holds below yesterday's high and then you break the low from yesterday, that's actually near-term bearish, okay, on a daily standpoint. Uh, near-term. I'm looking for more divergence. I'm looking for more exhaustion before I try to start anything on the short side. Uh, okay, should I should I resend what SB email? So Robert, you can send uh, you can send my personal email on SB and Butro, uh, but you're probably just better sending off to info at sbtradedesk.com. Everything gets forwarded to me pretty quick. So feel free to do that, Robert, uh, whenever you get a chance. All right, that is SPX. What is the other thing? What is the other one? Someone wanted something on. Oh, crude. I don't have. Uh, here, here's crude. I didn't have too much time with this one either. But the only thing I wanted to highlight is this. So I'm pretty sure this is not what I had on there um, in the previous update, and the weekly chart hasn't get gotten affected. So let me just show you. Let me just show you. Uh, crude on the weekly. Okay, uh, the thing's constructive for me, but you're coming again towards an area of which I'd be hard pressed to encourage anyone to take fresh longs up here. If you're holding along anything southbound of 50, 55, 50, I think you're all right. I think you kind of go break even and you let it play out. I do want to see an extension into the upper parallel. Ideally, so let me take a step back. I'm not stressing this slope as much, right? You did see some inflection along the median line in that 50 line. Okay, whatever you want to call that, right? But I am, I do love this level at 59, 60, 50 into 60. You got last year's open, an acceleration when we broke below it uh, last year, a 50% of the whole decline, so all of last year's range, um, and slope. That pivot fork that we were using from August of 2015 and 2016. Right, we were staying within that slope for so many years until we broke above in 2017. That gave us the accelerated rally. When we broke below, we found support right along that median line. So that upper parallel comes in line with both of those levels, the 50% retracement and last year's open, 59.60.60. Ultimately, I want to see a breach, a move here, okay? Um, again, I don't, I don't want to get too stringent with this slope, but that's sort of my game plan. Now, so take that for what it's worth. That's the weekly chart. It could play out a couple of different ways. You could see some volatility before it starts to move. But here it is on the daily chart. And what I don't like here is that, you know, while you're not getting divergence, it's not, you know, it's not the most bullish momentum profile at these levels. You saw that we tagged a 100-day moving average in overnight trade here and kind of pulling back. This was a confluence region we were watching. You know, if I saw that break and close above, like I just told you in all the other examples, I would have wanted to see acceleration. The fact that we closed above back here uh, on the 15th and we kind of just been doing this, uh, it, it reduces the amount of the amount of conviction, the amount of confidence that I have with the slope. So um, put a bullet to my head, I would say look for a pullback in crude and fade that move. But I do would need to consider a larger pullback in price before trying to get back on the long side here. And again, guys, I will have all these charts updated, but it's taking me some time, obviously, to get through the dozens and dozens and dozens of pairs that we follow. 
So I'll spend some more time with this, um, but from this standpoint, I'm essentially look. If it holds 55, like I said, if you're if you're north, if you're long from anything southbound of that, I'll go break even. But I'd, I'd let it stay because above 55, I do like it higher. Um, it's just that the way it mounted 55 here it looks to me like, man, it could be getting tired. You're seeing on the near term charts on this two hour, you know, ongoing divergence in price. If you get a deeper washout, I'd be looking for a structure to the downside, and I'd be looking for that correction to ultimately give us a better opportunity to get long. No way of knowing that this pitchfork is anywhere near functional yet, but just to give you an idea of how I'd be looking to play this, um, I think that correction would give us the better entry for the larger move higher in crude. All right. I could be completely wrong, um, Pete. If this thing plows through the highs, I, you know, there's tons of room to the upside. There's tons of room to the upside. 59, like I told you, 59, 90s, 60, huge region, huge region of resistance. Um, but I'm just a little concerned from trying anything on the long side from here. Make sense? Pete says, thank you. Hey, you're more than welcome, sir. All right. That's everything on my end. Guys, I will be back on tomorrow. So we will pick up um, right where we left off and see if we get some action off of the FOMC minutes. Um, and that will be um, tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern. And then again, I will see you, uh, and then Jamie, rather, will be on later today for his midweek strategy webinar as well. Best of luck trading, guys. Keep the powder dry as you head into 2 o'clock. Let's see what that, um, what the minutes release shows. I really am not, I'm not expecting much. Unless they say specific commentary towards tapering um, the asset unload, unless they specifically say that, it's going to be a, a moot um, reaction, in my point, in my opinion. Okay. Wrap it up there. Best of luck trading, guys. See you tomorrow morning. Cheers.